Hello friends, welcome to Concepts of Geology, the online platform where we are learning crystallography now through a series of comprehensive classes. So we have completed uh, five classes in the series of crystallography and today on the sixth class we are going to learn about the crystal systems. Okay, so let's start. What are crystal systems and why they are needed in crystallography? Before starting today's topic in particular, we need a summary what we have learned till now. On the beginning, we had learned about the two-dimensional arrangement of motifs. We called them as plane lattices. Okay, We had five plane lattices, look here, and their corresponding unit cell shapes in two dimensions. Okay, Clearly, we had five basic unit cell shapes in two dimensions. So after that we added one more translation vector in these two dimensional unit cells and we created these three dimensional unit cell saps. Okay? We got six basic three dimensional unit cell saps namely triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, hexagonal, trigonal and cubic. Okay? Now think whatever unit cell we have discussed till date they are having motive points on the corners only okay like this and always they were containing one complete motif in cumulative why i am saying this i am saying this because every time this may not be the case we may have one more motif point within a single unit cell and these are called non primitive unit cells okay we have heard this name but we will discuss non primitive unit cells in later class in details now very interestingly, whatever the arrangement of the motifs in three dimension is, whatever the unit cell may be, one thing you may take almost as a thumb rule that the shape of the unit cell will be one of these basic unit cell shapes. Okay? I mean these six basic unit cell shapes we have discussed in the last class. I told almost because one more shape is there which is called this one rhombohedral okay that is basically an inclined cube we will learn it about later but for now just take it into the list so that means throughout the globe in the context of 3d atomic arrangements only these seven basic steps can fill the three-dimensional space without leaving any interstitial gap Okay, so now think we have got a very interesting fact that we may have thousands of mineral species having different external appearances, but all are having unit cells belongs to these seven basic unit cell steps. Okay, this is no doubt very strange, but again very true. We may have different external appearances of crystals, but it is impossible to have an unit cell step other than these seven. So very clearly we have now only these seven crystal systems possible in this universe whenever we are talking about the three dimensional arrangements of the motifs. Okay. So they are named as the name of the unit cell shape. Okay. Triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, tetragonal, trigonal, hexagonal and cubic. Okay. So look at the list here the cell constants and the angles between the vectors are uh, listed. So these are the seven crystal systems. Now, if you put a closer look in this table, you may find out that uh, we have trigonal and hexagonal systems having the cell constants and the angles just similar to each other. Okay, why this is happening, we will discuss it later on the uh, later class. But for now, let us clarify these things. We may have hundreds of mineral species crystallized within these crystal systems, but they are having the unit cell shapes only these seven this also we can say that most of the crystals they are crystallizing within these low symmetric crystal systems that means the triclinic monoclinic and orthorhombic while we will have a less number of crystals or mineral species those are crystallizing in these higher symmetric crystallographic uh, systems so this were about the crystal systems but now let me clarify one thing that in nature crystals rarely grow perfect okay normally they are having an imperfect shape so to determine the crystal system it is at all not sufficient that we will just measure the length and the interfacial angles of the unit cell and 
we will choose an option from this above list okay this matrix will provide an idea about the crystal systems after that we need an optimum uh, confirmation test that is to determine the symmetry of the unit cell that means the number of rotational axis the number of mirror planes their arrangements and the interrelationships between them okay each crystal system have some conformational symmetry elements which confirms their systems okay suppose in case of the cubic system the conformational symmetry elements are four threefold rotational axis okay again in case of orthonomic system we have three mutually perpendicular two-fold rotational axis okay so these are the conformational tests for determining the crystal systems okay these cell constants and the angles are just providing an elementary idea about the crystal systems okay so this is all for today we will meet again on the next class and till then goodbye